Hi, I'm Karen K. Buckley and I would like to tell you about my Bigger Perfect Circles. When you purchase the pack of Bigger Perfect Circles, what you'll find inside is 10 different sizes of circles, two of every size. They range in size from two and a quarter inches to four and a half inches. They are made from a heat resistant plastic to allow you to do the process that I like with a dry medium heat and you must get on that medium heat setting for this product. If you go too high on your heat, these will warp. So you want to keep a medium heat. I always say wise to test on a lower heat and work your way into it if you're not sure. In this package that comes with it in the paper insert, it has detailed directions on how this product works, but I'm going to show you all the steps right here. Once I've determined the size circle that I need for my project, I'm going to take the circle and I'm going to place it on the back of my fabric and I've already done that step here and I drew the line on my fabric. Then I want to cut the fabric with a quarter inch seam allowance or slightly less. Then I come in with a needle and thread by hand, start it with a good heavy knot. I like to use a quilting thread. It needs to be a, a, a thread that has some strength to it. I always say nothing wimpy for this step, a nice strong thread. And you want to do a small running stitch. It has to be outside the line you drew but inside the raw edge, right in the middle, between the raw edge and the line that you drew. A nice small running stitch. Don't turn this into a basting stitch or it won't work as well. So I have my running stitch already in here. I'm then going to take my circle and place it back on the fabric and I'm just going to hold on to it gently and then I'm going to pull and this will wrap itself right up over the edge of this circle. I'm going to flip it over just so you can see, but we're not finished just yet. I want to come back and excuse me, I'm just going to get my needle off of here. Just want to hold on to this thread. I like to wrap it around my hand. I call it the death grip. I don't want this to pop open. So I hold on very tightly and then with my fingers I'm going to take and smooth all my edges. The reason I do this, when you uh, gather this fabric in, and that's the word, you're gathering it. You took a large amount of fabric and brought it into a small area. It creates gathers. You want to make sure the gathers are in towards this raw edge and none of them are still out here or that will create a little point on your curve. So I just like to smooth, make sure all those gathers are pushed in. Holding on with my death grip, I'm going to drop it down on my ironing board and I'm going to reach here and grab, I like to use a little stencil brush and I'm going to dip it into my magic sizing. I like sizing over starch because I found that the sizing just gives me that crisp edge I'm looking for but is not difficult to sew through and some of the starches were leaving a cakey residue on my fabric that I didn't like. So I apply the sizing. I usually just do it with the brush as you're seeing here. Then I'm bringing my iron over on the dry medium heat setting and I want to position it right over the back of that circle. It needs to sit on here for approximately 20 seconds in order for this uh, sizing to dry. I, again, medium dry heat on this setting. And usually what I'm doing, because I rarely make a quilt that only has one circle, is while the iron is sitting and drying this circle, I have my hands free to start doing the running stitch in the next circle. You do not need to push down on the iron. You just want to let it sit to dry. That's all it needs. It's the heat, not the pressure that we're looking for here. And then I am going to lift this up and pull my iron away. You can pick this up immediately. It's not going to burn you. It's warm, but it's not that hot. And I usually just sort of touch it. Now, I see like a tiny little bit of moisture in here in the plastic. That's fine. I just want to make sure the fabric is dry and it's completely dry. Now that it's dry, I want to find that tail of thread. And I'm going to give it just a little bit of a tug so I see where I finished stitching. I started with a knot, but I didn't end with one. That allows me to loosen the seam and then I'm going to lay my circle to the side because now I have this to reuse over and over and over and over and over. I'll have it forever. And then I'm going to pull on this tail of thread and just gently start pulling on it and then it'll pull itself right back exactly how I had it pressed. I'm going to clip this tail and I'm going to flip it over and now I'm ready to either hand or machine applique that edge. I do not remove these basting stitches. I just leave them in the back of the circle and it works just fine.